Math 31, welcome to example four. So in example four, we're gonna start to talk about this idea of half-life. And it, it pops up plenty in science. So half-life is the amount of time it takes for any quantity, any substance, that decays exponentially to become half of its initial amount. So let's say you had some substance that initially had 100 grams. How long does it take it to decay to half of what its um, original amount was? That's the half-life. How long does this take? Does this take? And that is what we call the half-life. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at a setup. It's saying it's decaying exponentially. So as soon as I see we've got some exponential decay, I know I'm gonna be going with a sub zero e to the kt. Or, or you could use pert again, but I'm gonna go a sub zero e to the kt. So let's see if we can spot some ordered pairs in here. So we've said, it says here, suppose 800 grams of a radioactive substance are present initially, and two and a half years later, half of it remains. Okay, so I see two ordered pairs here. I've got my initial amount, right? So I see that I've got the ordered pair 0, 800. And then I also see this time unit of 2.5 and 400. All right. Now, before we go on, I do want to show you how you could get more ordered pairs. Half-Life definitely has a pattern. So you'll see that it took me two and a half years to get to half of what I initially had. So I want you to think about what happens at five years. How many grams are left, right? So from zero to two and a half, I went from 800 to 400. So if I span another two and a half years, how much will I have left? And some people think zero, but that's not how it works. This isn't linear decay, this is exponential decay. So I'm multiplying these quantities by a ratio, right? So I took 800 and I multiplied it by one half because it was the half-life. And then to find out five years later, I would need to multiply it by one half again, right? It's half of what you previously had. So this would be 200. If I wanted to go another 2.5 years, right? How much would I then have? 100 because I'm going by half. If I went out to 10 years, how much would I have then? 50, right? And then 25 and then 12.5, and that's what exponential, well, growth or decay, but specifically decay in this case is, is that you multiply by a constant or technically divide by a constant, I guess not technically, you could say multiplication or division. I'm either multiplying by a half each time out or I'm dividing by two. Those are the same things in math, but that's how you work half-life problems, or at least if you wanna get some ordered pairs. Ultimately, you only need two. I really only need the, the two here, but I just wanted you to get some feelings for how this half-life is working. Okay, so now if this is my initial amount, that's gonna be my a naught value, and then I'll use this next ordered pair to solve for k, and then I'll have that model. So let's see what we have here. So I know y is equal to 800 e to the kt. Let me plug 400 in for y. 2.5 in for, for t, so we will get 400 equaling 800 e to the k times 2.5. All right, and now it's a matter of solving this exponential equation. So like always, I wanna isolate the exponential term. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 800 and I will get e to the 2.5 k is equal to 1 half, or you could write it as a decimal 0.5. I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides so I will get that 2.5k is equal to the natural log of 1 half. Because again, when I log both sides, actually let me not skip that step just in case that was too much. But I want to log both sides and I'm going to opt to natural log because the base of my power is e. So I'm going to take the natural log of e to the 2.5k. That will be equal to the natural log of 1 half. These will cancel. So that's where I was saying from before 2.5k is equal to the natural log of 1 half. And, and I can calculate that number on my calculator. I'm gonna now divide both sides by 2.5 and see what this k value is equal to. All right, so let's head over to my calculator and I'll clear this out. So I would have the natural log of 1 half divided by 2.5 and that would be about negative 0.2773, and it should be negative. This is exponential decay at this point. 
So here we go. That means ultimately for my model, I'm going to have y is equal to 800 e to the negative 0 0.277, nope, yeah, 277, I'll go one more, 3t. All right, and you don't have to go four decimals. I just felt like it this morning, okay? So there's my model. All right, fantastic. It's exponential. It's modeling my data. I'm feeling good. Now, let me go ahead, scooch this up just a bit so we can see the second part of the problem. I'm gonna try and keep that model in view. There we are. Okay, so let's keep this model in view. I know it's written up here, but we can rewrite it if we want. This says, how much of the substance will be present after four years? All right, so if we're talking four years, I wanna go back to my initial data values, right? We knew two and a half years in, I would have 400 grams of that substance remaining. So how much is gonna be left after four years? Well, from two and a half to five years, my substance decays from 400 grams to 200 grams. And four is closer to five than it is to 2.5. So I think I'm gonna have closer to 200 grams. My guess would be like 250 would be left after four years. I obviously don't know the exact value, but somewhere around 250 is what I should be expecting. Now this is a T value. So again, this is the nicer version of the follow-up question. This is when I gave you a T value, asked you for a Y value. It's always more work when I give you the Y value and ask you for the T value. All right, so let's do this. I wanna figure out how much of this substance is going to be present after four years. So let's do 800 e to the negative 0 0.2773 times four. And I'm gonna plug that into my calculator. And we will, oops, not that, let's go here. We will do 800 times, actually, hold on. So my last answer, I'm gonna keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go 800 e to that answer times four, because I wanna be as precise as possible. So if I put this answer in, then you can see that it's floating all of those decimals. So it's not even rounding off at 0.2773 or technically negative 0.2773. And if you're not sure where I got the answer, again, that answer button lives over your negative key, but it's in, it's in blue, so you wanna hit the second key to activate it. All right, when I hit enter, what am I looking at? About 263.9 grams. Let's just see how different it would have been if I, if I approximated with negative 0.2773 times four. Is my answer that different? Not really that different, right? I mean, I think you guys might have gotten eight, five, and I got nine, but it would have rounded to pretty much the same. So we'll say 263.9, and the units on this are grams. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to my computer, and I wanna give you a preview of where we're going in 6.8. I just wanna show you another option for this. And again, when we do it the 6.8 way, I won't have a base E anymore. But when I do it on my computer and I come back here, I, I want you to see how they're related. All right, so give me a moment. We're gonna to flip to my computer. I'm gonna show you how you run exponential on your exponential regression on your calculator. And then I'm gonna show you how my answer using the A not E to the KT is equivalent to the answer to the model that you're getting on your calculator. All right, I'll see you in just a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, welcome back to example four. I just wanna give you a bit of a preview of what's to come in example or in section 6.8. So in section 6.8, rather than using y equaling a sub zero e to the kt, rather than using that um, exponential model or, or that exponential equation for our model, your calculator can do something called exponential regression. The main difference between the, the process we've been using so far in 6.7 and what we're going to do in 6.8 is that all the examples we've done in 6.7, <clears throat> excuse me, so far, the base has been E, right? And we love having powers with base E or an exponential equation with base E because we have that natural log button on our calculator. Now, when we move to exponential regression on our, our calculator, when it, when it um, crunches some stats for us, it won't be base E anymore, it'll be base B, so A times B to the X. It'll look more like what it did back in section 6.1. So let me just show you what you can do. Here's another way of getting an exponential model. Oops, 
let me <laughs> leave that there. Um, but again, it won't have base E like it, like it has been for the problems we've done so far in this section. So if you want to use exponential regression, you need at least two points. And we talked about how you can fill in more points here with half-life, right? I know that there's the ordered pair 5, 200, and then 7.5, 100, so on and so forth. But we don't, we don't need that many. We just need two. So let's go put those data points into our list. Um, it looks like I have a little bit of... Um, data in here. So I don't even need to clear it out. I'm just going to overwrite it. looks like we have zero and then, oops, 2.5. So let me edit out the one and write 2.5. And it looks like on our Y values, we had 800 and then a 400. All right. Now, if I want to make a scatter plot, I can. Um, right now, I have all of my plots off. I'll just turn one of them on. And let me hit zoom nine. All right. And I can see my calculator thinking up here. That's usually a pretty good indicator that I've left something in my y equals. So hold up. Yeah, there they are. So whenever I was on this calculator last, I forgot to clear it out. So this, right now, it could look linear for all we know, but I'm going to try and fit oops, an exponential decaying model into it. So let me clear all of my key press history out. And let me show you how you do this. So go back to your home screen. We're going to hit stat. We're going to go to Calc, and we're going to scroll all the way down to option zero. Now, you can scroll down to zero and hit enter, or I'm lazy. I'm just going to hit the zero button, and that will pull up exponential regression. And then it's the same program, L1, L2. Let me put it into Y1. All right, and then we get that, that output. There's our initial value. There's our exponential decay, right? We see our base is about... 0.76, so this substance is, substance is decaying by about 24% per year because that base, again, it's a number lower than one, which is telling us we're looking at exponential decay. Now, if I hit zoom nine again, it's really kind of hard to see that as a curve because we're so zoomed in. We're only going from zero to 2.5. So let me just reset my window a little. Let me extend the x-axis so that you can see it. And let me like, I'll just go to 10. And let me lower the Y minimum so we can actually see the decay, the decay happen. I'll go zero. And then you would be able to see that exponential model going through a little bit better. All right, and I, I screenshotted all that, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a slightly different scale on the one that I screenshotted, but both of these scales are working. All right, so I want to flip back to my handwritten work, and I want to show you how this exponential model is the same model that we found when we were doing it by hand. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye. Okay, we're back. So I want to show you how the equation or the model you got from your calculator really is this same model here. So I showed you in example one how we could go from an exponential model with base E over to a base B model, right? That's when we took a look, this was example three, we went from E naught E to the KT to A times B to the X in example three. Well, now I'm gonna go the other way. We're gonna start here and go back to this version. And it's, it's wonkier to go back. I don't know if wonky is a technical term, but it is as of right now. So we've got from our calculator, if we remember, we had our model here, right? And it was, y equaling 800 times 0.758 to the x, right? A times b to the x. And our, we did have exponential decay here because our base was less than one. So that's, that's all fine and good. So it's easier, like I said, to go here, this to e to the, a not e to the kt to a times b to the x. It's trickier to go backwards. So what I'm about to do, you might not think to do of on your own, which I totally understand. I wouldn't either. But once you've done it, it's kind of this trick we use in, in math. So I could write this. I could keep the 800. And I could rewrite this as e to the ln of 0.758 to the x. And you might be thinking, like, why on earth would you do that? I, I'm with you. But I want you to see that it's legit, even though it might sound nutty to do. E's and LN's would just cancel out, so I really do have 800 times 0.758 to the x. So I haven't changed this equation, but I have definitely rewritten what it looks like. 
But the, the bonus to this is that through properties of logarithms, you can use the power property and bring the x down in front of that logarithm. So I have y is equal to 800 e to the x times the natural log of 0.758. Well, let's see what the natural log of 0.758 is equal to. Now I'm gonna try and float all of these decimals, 0.757858 what is that equal to? Negative 0.2773, which should seem pretty familiar. So this is 800 e to the negative 0.2773 times x, or as we had been using it before, times t. So you can see that these are the same models. So there's the a times b to the x version. There's the base e version. And again, calculus folks, and myself included, I, I usually work with the base e model just because we have that natural log button on our calculator and it's just that much simpler for me to manipulate these equations. All right, so with that, we're going to take this idea of exponential growth and we're going to apply it to a couple of very specific situations. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.